Well, first thing we gotta smile. Hey, that will be a future thumbnail for this video. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, Rob Murray here, and I got Harold DeVries, Renaissance Greetings. man and entrepreneur. Renaissance man. Absolutely. Wow, you're I not mean, saying that I'm from the Middle Ages now, are you? No, not even. A little <laughs> okay. Bit. Toastmaster <laughs> extraordinaire, uh, business advisor, entrepreneur. No, you're making me super blush. Super fashionable. Now you're really making me blush. Um, I just want to tell you, like, the relationship we've had over the years has meant a lot. Uh, Harold opened a lot of doors for us. There was one specific introduction you made to Innovation Guelph ah, and Steve Barrett. Right on. He's still a mentor. He's on our board of advisors. Wow, uh, that's He's cool. helped us grow, and uh, your support has been, you know, it will be forever appreciated. So Awesome. Well, that goes both ways. Well, you, no, you know, just <laughs> So we're doing I'm in a Car with Harold DeVries. This is episode, I think this is episode number 17. So we're starting to uh, get some momentum going with these things. So thanks for doing it. Okay. As long as you're arresting the momentum going backwards here. No, no, you're good. You're okay. good. You're okay. good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, you don't know what you're in for, do you? Uh, you're right. I don't. I never, I never know what I'm in for with Harold. Keep it coming, dude. Keep it coming. Um, so yeah, I mean, you've done so much. So maybe you can just give uh, the audience a little bit of context around kind of where you've come from and what you're up to. Um, how far back do you want to go? I don't know, as far back, back as you in think is relevant? The, uh, back in, well, back in the 90s, I ran, started my own business. I got tired of having to wait for customers to come see me in the clothing store I worked in, so I went out and turned the tables and decided to take the clothing store right to the, um, right to the doors of the people I was serving with an in-office custom clothing service. That's a business that I ran for nine years until my customers became more of a pain than a joy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, from there, I just switched over into uh, doing what I thought turned out to be a real vocation, helping people do what I did, that, that is start and run businesses. Cool. So that was, been working on that uh, since January of, uh, of 1999. Well, and that's how we got introduced, was right. through the Guelph Wellington Business Center. You're right. So I, I, I started in Kitchener back in 99, four years in the private sector, and then in June of 2012, I joined the Business Center Guelph Wellington. Right? Cool. Very that's cool. when we met. Awesome. Yes. And the rest is history. What a history it was. <laughs> and and now you've, uh, you've done improv, uh, you've done... Um, what was the the talks that were out? In oh, ignite, uh, water, ignite, water, ignite, water, ignite, water, ignite water, talks. Water, ignite well. Um, you know, Stand you, up. You, yes. you've, you've done a ton of stuff with Toastmasters. Yes, and won some awards. Yeah, that was that was quite the experience. I, I decided after years of being rec people recommending join Toastmasters, you'll love it. I finally found a, um, a group um, that started as a charter group. We chartered in January. We meet every Monday at uh, Goodness Me at noon. It's an awesome group of people, uh, Toastmasters. I participated in the on the last weekend, actually, at the international speech and evaluation competitions at the district level. So uh, this was, as they build it, it was the quarterfinals for the world's and it was an awesome experience. Cool. Well, I'll make sure after we do this video, I count how many ums you gave us, and yes, I'll send, I'll send you Thank your report. You. I appreciate that. <laughs> Grammarian report. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> how uh, many filler words did? Yeah. Feel free to leave in the comments below if you can count yes. how many com or how many uhs or ums Harold gave us. That'd be great. So uh, you know when I was when I was I knew you decided to do this. Um, I always have some questions kind of pre-planned, uh, and and one of the kind of coolest and, and biggest challenge I had with doing this one is you've got such a huge array of experiences to draw from um, but I kind of figured well the catalyst for this was the event we're hosting next Tuesday right. uh, lead yourself correct yeah. and so I thought maybe we would just touch on the presentation that you're bringing to the crowd okay because uh, I'm gonna be doing like a little kind of Cole's notes summary of all the speakers because I'm doing I'm in a car with everybody before the event and I want right. to kind of put them together to see okay. music and that kind of stuff so on Tuesday you're gonna be talking about your inner critic how to deal with your inner critic yeah so first of all can you just kind of explain what is the inner critic that you're referring to that's the the inner critic and actually is that inner voice that we have that edits everything that we do in in my case um, as a there's another um. Uh, in, <laughs> in my case, as a, an avid amateur musician back in high school, I found that 
every time I picked my horn up to play and if there was a difficult passage or a solo passage I get this voice in the back of my head telling me how I couldn't I, I couldn't do it because as well as somebody else could so why bother even trying okay and it got to the point where it was actually holding me back from a lot of things I there are a lot of things I didn't go even try because of this inner voice. And it wasn't until a particular moment that you'll hear about at the event, uh, I, I can actually track it to a particular moment at a wedding reception when I had one of those aha moments and realized this is something that, that, that I could actually master. So, the inner critic, do you mean? The, the, my inner critic, yeah. So, so go ahead. No, no, feel free. No, I was just going to say, we. I think we all have this this inner voice and we need it. I do for sure. Right? But the challenge that we have, at least that I had, was the fact that he was overpowering every thought that that if I had an idea, oh, you'll, it'll never work. Right? Right. Um, always making me second guess and to the point of peril, paralysis. Right. I, I think that's... I, I like to say that now I still have my inner critic, but he's down to a dull roar or a whisper. Right. Right. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's interesting, right? Um, as you're describing it, I've I've thought about a couple of different uh, people we've had on the show. Right. And um, Craig Early was on a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about this idea where fear can start to convince you that something isn't a good idea for whatever reason that might be, and you know, what if I get rejected? What if I? And typically. Though that dialogue isn't happening out loud when you're by yourself, it's happening in between your ears, and that's kind of like the inner critic. Mm -hmm. And so okay. he was talking about this idea of like five, four, three, two, one, go, right? And just like stop doing that. And so I think um, the reason I bring it up is it's this kind of a little bit of a common theme in a lot of people that are successful is their ability to kind of master that inner critic mm -hmm. and keep them to a dull whisper. I think at some level there can be a purpose it serves. Absolutely. At some level. Yes. Absolutely. I, I'm not sure if I am convinced I know what it is. <laughs> but there's got to be something there. I think, personally, I think that's something that we all find that level as what is it that I need? What role does my inner critic need to play in my life? Yeah, like don't jump off the 80 foot cliff. Basically. Like yes. 40 is good, 80. You know, it's like, don't do it. Well, that would be something you would do. <laughs> yeah. I, at my office at the business center, people often will ask me why I keep a, a rubber mallet on my desk. And that's in, in for those people who don't have an inner critic, I call it my rubber mallet of common sense. Okay. Every once in a while, you just kind of have to pull it out and remind somebody that, yeah, you might want to think about that. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> like, 40's good, 80 not so much. <laughs> exactly. At least not with that parachute. So one of the things you've kind of had a privilege in your position to do is like help, you know, probably hundreds of starting businesses, entrepreneurs, take their business to the next level. Yes. And so I would imagine that through those experiences, there's some common themes of challenges and opportunities that you've kind of encountered. So for the, the person that's thinking about starting their business or maybe even the, the owner of a business that wants to take it to the next level, is there something that you would say to them through your experiences that you found to be true and almost you know universally that they would want to keep in mind or consider when you know building a team or starting a business or whatever, or anything like that? Probably the, the most important one is, is choose your destination. It's so easy to just launch into a business and start growing it and I hope that it will grow organically. Uh, whether it's starting business or even wanting to grow your business. Unless you know what that, you have chosen a, a goal or what I refer to as a destination. You're starting here, you want to get to this point. Now we can map out, a, uh, we can program the GPS or map out a, a route to get there. Right. Uh, and along with that, and for probably first and foremost, is to look at why you want to do it. I think a lot of people get into uh, get into business that I've seen. They get into the business because this is the only choice that I have. This is something I'm really good at. I might as well make a business out of it. Right. That's good. Yeah. But when uh, hard times come and you start worrying about where is my business next customer going to come from, you really don't have anything to fall back on. There's no plan. There's no no drive to push you forward. Right. Passion only takes you so far. That's the fuel. 
you need some kind of sense of purpose that's going to give you some direction to where you want to go. Yeah, it's interesting because as you as you describe it that way, uh, I totally agree. And I think the kicker is it's really easy to get through shitty times when you understand why you're doing what you're doing. Exactly. And um, I can relate here at Intrigue, like a lot of people, we get a lot of really positive feedback in the community about, you know, the direction we're taking as an organization and the team experience and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think people always understand the nuances and the days, uh, you know, the in and out of, or the ups and downs of the day in and day out. Because sometimes in the beginning of the year, it was like this cloud kind of over the, over the organization. And not to say we weren't growing and doing great things, but it was, it was a, it was a tough, like kind of walking through sludge moment in the organization. Um, and it was a bit tougher to come in and, and do the things. And sometimes you question about why. And, but then I think when we fall back on our purpose, this, this idea of empowering leaders and strengthening communities and using that as a compass of why we need to get up and keep pushing because this is something that's worth doing. Um, it's really made it easier to kind of push through that sludge. And now today, you know, I would say our energy in the office right now, the, the momentum is huge and that's we're cool. starting to see a lot of traction, which is awesome. But it was only with really coming back and talking about like it, what we're doing is meaningful mm -hmm. and we need to keep going. Have you ever run cross country? Yeah, so Back sadly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in high school, this is the one sport I, I actually got involved in and actually had some success with is running cross country. And I remember the training route that we ran. There was always one low area where it was just like this muddy, marshy field. And after the weather like we've had recently with all this rain, I guarantee you, it would be like six inches of mud. Right. And it... I, if you ran into this, by the time you got to the other side of this field, you had like 10 pounds of mud on each shoe. Yeah. And it was just so easy to get in, the, when you got in the middle of it, just to give up and say, oh, I said, I'm done. Yeah. And, but unless you had something to work for and you had somebody pushing you and a coach coming out like, this is what we're, where we're going, this is what's going to happen at the end, that made it easier, even with those... 10 pounds of mud on each feet on each foot to get to through that we go through that in business too right right and that's where you came from the fact that we're here when the thick of it we're making progress not much but we're making progress look where we're going yeah that's it so that's cool I love those metaphors. Yeah, dude. And they all work. <laughs> yeah. I totally believe in them. So thank uh, you for doing this. My pleasure. Why, my pleasure. Just before we go, why do you do what you do? Why do you find so much energy and passion for helping other people grow their business? I noted a few years ago that my career tends to run in nine-month cycles. Every nine months, something significant changes in my career. Uh, often small, but not often big. And I remember during one of those gestation periods, I, I uh, was just major career crisis. And then I found this wonderful book called The On Purpose Person. Mm -hmm. And I read that, devoured it in the evening, took me a week to digest it, and as re was felt challenged to create some kind of a purpose statement, something mm -hmm. to articulate why I do what I do. And since I've had that, it's just something which gears to helps me keep focused on what I want to do. I love helping people. And I, my purpose statement is I exist to serve by helping others build foundations. Cool. Right? And if, as long as I know that the biggest thrill that I get is seeing somebody else achieve a dream or something that they were aspiring to. I walk into a, a to see a client who has just started their business, and they they each get that same silly grin on their face that says, "Look what I created!" Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And I get goosebumps. Yeah, and it happens every single time. Awesome, right? So that's why I do what I do. Well, thanks for doing in, it. in the long-winded way. That was great. No. <laughs> hey, 13, 14 minutes. I'm trying to keep them under ten. We're doing all right. Okay. okay. Thanks, Tim. Oh, we'll, we'll take the ums out, and then you can edit it down to 10. <laughs> yeah, sure. Four minutes of ums. We'll see what the comments <laughs> say. Thanks, guys. Awesome.